chance and then you blew it. That is the most absurd statement of the year. Noise. <laughs> Noise. Oh, big B. I'm in my zone. I'm feeling it. Live from Rock Solid Studios in Granite Falls, it's time for Minnesota Sports, live with DJ Matty C and Paul the Shield Vold. And this is Minnesota Sports Live. We are back. Yes, episode 69. Yeah, go ahead. Cue the jokes, all that fun <laughs> stuff. We, we all get that. Yada, yada, yada. But anyway, I'm your host, DJ Matty C, a.k.a. Matt Callen, a.k.a. Callie, a.k.a. Matty C, ah, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And all the way from Woods and Shores Studios in Aiken, Minnesota, Paul Volt, ah, Shield. What's going on, Shield? Dude, it feels like it's been a month since I've been on the show. It's yeah. been crazy, everything that's going on, but I'm just happy to be back and ready for a great show tonight. It is going to be a great show. And, you know, I Voldy, I had to throw somebody somebody a bone this week. You know, he's this, this guy, he likes to... He likes to get on my nerves, and he's already ready to go, which is fine. I yeah. like that. Let's go, boys. Let's go. Let's get it pumped up around here. Exactly. It's time uh, to get Mr. Munson back on the show, and we did. We recorded on Monday, and uh, there, yeah. there, was a lot, there was a lot that was said. Um, we talked about how Ant, of course, got robbed, and, you know, Cole gave his thoughts on that, and then among some other things, the future for the Wolves, and obviously they're always looking towards the future because it's the Wolves. For that uh, matter, exactly. And then, you know, we, we kind of dive deep into uh, Cole's uh, proposition. And I think Voldy was a fan of it. I'm kind of on the fence about it. But there is a lot that was said and a lot of fun things that was talked about, too, with this interview with Cole Munson. Uh, obviously, we're talking about the Wolves. And, you know, I think uh, the Wolves are the Wolves. But it's time to unveil our interview. Uh this is our tater tot hot take for this week. I mean, just because, you know, we have an interview, we have a guest, and Cole, again, we talked about how he uh, only got one vote uh, for best guest of 2020, but I think this might change. This might change for <laughs> 2021, and I say this in the interview. So, uh, Voldy, let's get it going with uh, Cole Munson's interview with us uh, from this Monday. Let's go. All right, we are back on Minnesota Sports Live. It is time for... Another interview, another guest. Um, this this guy is referred to as the um, uh, gosh, what was it? Oh yeah, the Ricky Rubio apologist himself, <laughs> Cole Munson. It has been too long, my friend. Uh, the whole season just wrapped up. We're going to be talking a lot about that. But uh, welcome back, Cole. You know, you had I think you had one vote for best guest of 2020, and um, you know, I, I think. I think that's something to write home about. Is hey, you know what? You know what? In a vote that you can vote for yourself, I'll take one vote. <laughs> I'll take one vote. You, you, so that was I so you that was the best. I don't so, know, but yeah. So you admit that it was you're the one who voted for yourself. Oh, 100 percent. Of course he hey, did. Hey, I gotta boost myself up a little bit there. I, you, you know when you guys are going to like the grocery store and stuff and you walk by and you see like just all of the apples up there and then there's like one where there's just like one left no one ever grabs that one once you grab that uh first apple there people start seeing that and they're like okay yeah that actually looks pretty good you just gotta get it going a little bit you, you take that first vote it increases i just don't have that type of look well, here's the thing. You have another opportunity to win the award as well. Uh, best guess of 2021. So th this is like, this is a big segment for you. This is, oh, yeah. this is huge. This is my so, Super Bowl. <laughs> this is your this, Super this, Bowl. This is my Super Bowl, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Super Bowl homeboy, as Randy Moss uh, <laughs> liked to say. But we're, we're going to stick with Wolves here. But uh, <laughs> anyway, um, you know, it's, 
we didn't have you on last week, but uh, we, Mets and I, who was filling in for Voldy as well, um, we were talking about the uh, deal with the rookie of the year. And it, as it turns out, LaMelo Ball wins rookie of the year over uh, Anthony Edwards. Cue the booze uh, when this plays live. It will. Um, Cole, I, I've given my thoughts on this. Uh, I want your thoughts since you are our Timberwolves expert, along with Mr. Willard Tell as well. But we, 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 have, we have a lot of uh, experts on the show. But, Cole, what are your thoughts on this travesty of LaMelo Ball winning rookie of the year and do you think that anthony edwards should have won rookie of the year so let me start by saying this i definitely think Lamelo ball is a great player i definitely think that he's got a bright future that being said this is a travesty it's just an absolute sham i how do you miss 21 games out of a 72 game season that's basically a quarter that's over a quarter of the season that you missed and you end up winning rookie of the year over a guy that averaged about 20 points a game and over the second half of the sea or the second half portion of the season was on fantastic efficiency and they actually had I believe a winning record in the second half of the season when he was playing that well so you've got a guy that played a full season contributed to winning towards the end versus a guy that missed over a quarter of the season and I, I understand the arguments of that LaMelo's team made the playoffs, but they're in the East. I, I mean, we could field together a team here just of Minnesota sports players. We'd make, we'd make the eighth seed in the East. It's, it's not that hard. It's not that hard. Come Apparently. On. So um, I, it's just, it, it all revolves around the injury thing. Like, how, how do you make it? It, it is very one-sided. If you're going to take away from Joel Embiid for the MVP, if you're going to take away historically um, different players that have been hurt, and then you don't even give them a shot, how do you then go back on that to give LaMelo this award? It just does not make sense in my head. I don't think it makes sense at all. Um, I think, like you said, Cole, it's the name. And I think with, with LaMelo Ball being so so well-known, you know, we get the LeVar thing. We get, you know, Lonzo's in the league. Langelo is, uh, is not good, I should say, to be honest with you. I mean, the guy can barely even make a team, for one. Um, but the fact is that the guy didn't play – the amount of games that Ant did. Now, are there aspects of his game that is better than Ant's? Sure. I think he can pass the ball a little bit better. He's more of a bigger playmaker. Ant's more of a, I'm going to score type of game. But he keeps, you know, he's a 19-year-old kid. Mm -hmm. But let's just say this. He played 21 more games than LaMelo Ball, and he lost. This is a travesty in itself. but. I think the good that comes out of all of this, and I think I said this last week too, but it's going to make him stronger and better. And I think for, for year two as well. So we'll see what happens with that whole thing. But uh, Voldy, obviously you weren't here last week. What are your thoughts? I mean, is this an absolute travesty like we're saying here? Yeah, I, I definitely say so. All ball had to do Lamelo had to do was just show up basically as soon as he set out set stepped out on the court the the rookie of the year was his that's basically <laughs> how everybody put it as this year and anybody else that you know maybe uh add some decent numbers was not going to win this was Lamelo's award to lose unfortunately and it just so happened that his team so happened to be in a better position overall even though it's next to impossible if you're you know, in the Western conference to end up with a playoff spot and everybody gets a trophy in the Eastern conference too. I mean, I look at the numbers, you know what, if it just so happens that Edwards doesn't end up with the award, obviously it's already been decided. He doesn't get rook of the year. You know what? I add fuel to the fire, 19.3 points per game, 4.7 rebounds per game, two and a, almost three assists a game, 41% shooting, 32% from behind the arc, 77% free throw shooter, shooter in more games than 
you know, basically a third more games than LaMelo played with that wrist injury. And well, they just missed the playoffs as well. Did Charlotte when, you know, LaMelo was out, but I, I think it's just completely absurd as well. No Minnesota player and or team's ever going to win an award of major significance. And we've learned about that in the other sports here recently, especially with the Minnesota Wild, even though there is still hope. It's not good, but there's still hope that Kirill the Thrill can bring home the Calder Trophy. But we're holding out hope here. Uh, but Anthony Edwards not winning, again, like Munson did bring up, a travesty within itself. Well, real quick, one thing to keep in mind, do you guys know who votes on this stuff? You it's told me it was the writers, right? It's the media members. The media. Yeah, exactly. The media members vote on this stuff. Who's going to be a better story? Anthony Edwards on a historically losing team that doesn't go anywhere or one of the ball brothers that basically were social media, like absolute stars before they had their own show. Right. Yeah. yeah, They had their own show. So I, I find it hard to believe that this isn't partially click script where it's not somewhat about uh, who is going to sell the most clicks, who is going to drive home the star power and just drive up the brand of the NBA more. And it's sad that that's the case, but I, I have a hard time believing it's not much. Yep. Uh, and, you know, the, the whole notion is that they think, well, Ball's going to be a better player in the future anyway, so we might as well just give him rookie of the year. Well, that's not proven. That, that well, there's plenty of time before, before we make that assumption. But if you look at it from this year, Anthony Edwards was the better player and he was more deserving of the rookie of the year. Let me bring up another scenario too. Uh, this happened in the NFL, Justin Jefferson, Justin Herbert, not knocking Justin Herbert, but if you think about what Justin Jefferson did in his season as well, I'd say it's, it's much better than what, I mean, Herbert had, I mean, they, yep. they, we didn't make the playoffs. They didn't make the playoffs. It's <clears throat> all about, okay, who's going to give us a better story. Even though Jefferson was like the biggest ba- breakout player in the NFL for, uh, I mean, he broke Moss's records, everything like that. But again, it's Minnesota getting gypped again. That's how it is. It's just how it is here. That's just, Mm -hmm. it's, it's frustrating. It's frustrating. And Herbert's in Los Angeles. There you go. That's all you need. He's got the media. He's got 10 times the media coverage in one city than the Vikings ever will in that sense too. But yeah, Yeah. you can throw up all the numbers you want. Unfortunately, at the end of the day, with all the awards being voted on by the media, I mean, it's just completely unfair, but you know what? That's just how life goes, I guess. I'm going to, I'm going to add another thing too. Who owns the Charlotte Hornets? My Michael God, Jordan, Michael right? Jordan, baby. Michael Jordan does. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, all respect to MJ. We all love MJ, but still, yeah. I mean, that's just how it is. But, you know, let's move on to another topic that a lot of Wolves fans have been bringing up, though. And I think th- this has to be addressed as well. Um, you know, a lot of people are, are throwing question marks, you know, if, if Kat's going to stay. Does he want to be here his whole career? Um, there, there's been talk that he wants to be a wolf for life. And then again, Voldy and I kind of look at each other like, does he really want to be a wolf for life? I mean, we've seen KG go. So there's that, there's that to factor in as well. But let's, let's go with the three that we got here, okay? And then we're, we're going to move on to Cole's uh, uh, proposition. Do, you, do we think that Cat, D'Lo, Edwards – can lead us into a brighter future here. Do we think that these three guys that we have right now will lead us to where they want to go under the new A-Rod regime, under, you know, Rosas, however this goes. Hell, they might even go to a different city. We don't know. We have no (laughs) idea. So, Cole, let me ask you this, and then I'll I'll, uh, send it over to Voldy. Are those three guys – going to be the future of the wolves here what do you think so let me clarify one thing here quick yes, i will sir. never call payrod the best of anything <laughs> hey he could bring three championships to this town i'll never call him the best of anything he will still be payrod to me <laughs> um you know i i will get i will toss all the praise in the world to mark lord 
I will. Yeah. But I, Payrod is not receiving my praise. Um, as far as this core goes, I, I, it all revolves around Anthony Edwards. Um, we've seen what D'Angelo Russell can do. Uh, he's going to be a great end of game score he's going to be able to put up 18 to 20 points a game and about seven assists with pretty rough defense um and cat is going to be a superstar but he needs another guy and d'angelo russell's not that guy so it all hinges with this core on how good anthony edwards gets now Dwayne wade came out earlier in the year saying he's got more talent than i had um, and that he could be better than me someday. If that happens, we're looking at multiple chips. But uh, if we've got Dwayne Wade, prime Dwayne Wade on this team, we're looking at multiple chips. Um, but that is a very, like you're talking capping out at his ceiling. Um, he is arguably the best player that we have drafted in a while based on what I've seen on his rookie year uh, because he can create um, he can shoot he can score he's got uh, probably the biggest thing that I've seen from him that I don't see in someone we have drafted in a long time he's got some dog to him like he he isn't actually cat you know can kind of disappear and no ice. Uh, no ice. In, he gets scared off Andrew Wiggins is soft as tissue paper most of the time. D'Angelo Russell, um, you know, Nick Young thing, look it up. <laughs> but, <laughs> um, swaggy P. Good old Swaggy P. <laughs> but <laughs> Anthony Edwards, I, his ceiling is high enough that he can be the best player on a championship team. Um, I, if Dan or if um, Donovan Mitchell is the best player on a one seed, I think he is better than Don. He could very easily be better than Donovan Mitchell. He um, could. You're not saying he is. He, he is not right now. But I'm saying give him a year or two. Get let him get experience. Let him get a little bit of um, head of steam going. I think he could be the best player on a championship level too. Because I was is, about to nominate you for absurd statement. Oh no, that's what you're. No, 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 no. He is not. He is not. Great <laughs> cash, not, homie. He's no, definitely no. not. Not yet. Long, no. But he has a very high ceiling. Um, and going back to comparing him to Lamelo Ball, he has a higher ceiling than Lamelo Ball does. Um. And yeah, it, it it just again it comes back to who do we take in this draft if we get that pick. Because if you add another top end talent, I'm telling you, this is a championship core, even if Anthony Edwards becomes about 80% of what he can. Okay. Hold on to this audio, because if you if you if you're wrong on this call, you might be up for a certain <laughs> statement. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Okay, keep that in mind. Voldy, I send it over to you. Do you do you think these three, and or if you think that one of them will probably go to another team or whatever? I mean, do you do you at least one of these three? Do you think that they'll lead us into where we want to go in the future? I think in order for the Timberwolves to get where they need to, I think one of them has to go. I think that's just it's for one of them to happen. You got to make something happen. You got to get something back and i hate to say it too but i think it's got to be d i think out of the three the most expendable out of the lot is d i think he's you know put, he's put in some time but more times than not he either hasn't been healthy or he's just not playing all that much it's just the combination and especially towards the the late half of last year early point of this year it was just lack of production and time out on the floor as well but when fully healthy, you know what? He can be a game changer. But I think for the Timberwolves to get the one or two players in order to make up this full roster, they're going to have to move somebody. And I think D'Lo is the guy that's going to have to be the one to, you know, walk the plank on this one in order for the Timberwolves to get to the, to get to the other side. Interesting. Yeah. Because I, you know what? I, I'm, I, I disagree. I, I think, I think, right. and I, and here's, here, here's here's what, what I'm thinking. I think Edwards is definitely, you know, he's going to lead us in the future too. But I almost think it's Cat. 
And the reason why I think it's cat is because how many times have we, to- have we talked about cat, you know, getting into those big moments and being the, the guy mm-hmm. we haven't seen that we ha- defensively, he says he's working on. So yes, he's had, he has his moments, but when we get off him on that, he tends to get lackadaisical. He tends to not want to play, but this team needs to be built on some defense because yes, they score a lot of points. They scored a lot of points, but they gave up a lot of points. And, right. and there's that. So we have to factor that in as well. And D'Lo, don't get me wrong. I love D'Lo. I think D'Lo is a great shooter. I think like you said, Voldy, the injuries, that's something we got to factor in too. And I, I just think for the Wolves right now, they need a guy that can go out and score and stay healthy as well. But they need defensive veterans that know how to play, de- teach the, these veteran guys, come in, teach these guys how to play defense because you are not beating these teams that are playing really well in the West. Look at the Suns. Look at how well Book's playing. I mean, the Jazz, even though they lost to the Clippers, the Clippers, I mean, you got to go through that. And then the Lakers are going to come back stronger too. You need to have guys that are willing to go down and play some defense, okay? And that's what, granted, that's what Jimmy Butler wanted them to do and everything like that, which I don't necessarily disagree with, but, you know, that's for another time. Let's, I think it's Cat just because of the fact that he, he might get to a point where he's like, I've done everything. I fi- he thinks that he's done everything he could for this franchise. And he's close with everyone in the franchise too. And, you know, we wish him the best and everything like that. But I think he wants to be on a team where he doesn't have to be the guy. So I, I almost feel like it could come down to that. I could see D'Lo leaving and whatnot, but we'll see what happens. I, I I'm probably going with cat here on this one. So I'll, uh, I'll, I'll play devil's advocate. Um, but Munson, what is your proposition? Speaking of D you have a proposition to make not only to myself and Voldy, but the zoners as well, please hit us with it. So my proposition now this is not going to look as great coming out the playoff series. You just came out of, um, Alrighty. Basically, the proposition is we flip D'Angelo Russell for Ben Simmons. One for one trade, they're making about the same salaries. Uh, Ben Simmons comes in day one. He is probably a top five defender in the league. Um, He can lock down pretty much one through four. I don't know if he could guard a center very well, but he could lock down one for four. He was taking out Trey Young for a lot of that series um, and doing a heck of a job on him. So he comes in. He is your glue guy. He is your main defender. He is your Draymond Green to the Steph Curry and Klay Thompson. Um, and you send out D'Angelo Russell, who you guys love D'Angelo Russell. I, I think he's all right. As a third option, um, he does not play defense, and I don't know if you can win with the amount of lack of defense that we have. So you would send out D'Angelo Russell, you would receive Ben Simmons, you'd get a large dose of defense coming in, and we have the shooting to surround with him. You've got, because your starting lineup at that point will be Ben Simmons, Malik Beasley, Anthony Edwards, um, Katz, and Jaden McDaniels. You've got four pretty good to excellent three-point shooters surrounding Ben Simmons, with Ben Simmons being able to focus on creating offense and playing lockdown defense on their best player. Okay. Well, let me... let. Uh, <laughs> so when you brought this up, we've actually talked about this before. You brought up a lot of... Uh, uh, propositions with 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 ben simmons Mm -hmm. you have an infatuation with ben simmons i don't know what it is i don't know why it is but let me let me bring this up ben simmons has had plenty of opportunities yes he's a good defender and yes he would fit in well but the question is can you rely on losing a shooter like 
D'Lo. Now, here's D'Lo is a great shooter, nonetheless. He's, a, I think he's fantastic when he's on. Like you said, he doesn't play very good defense. That's what the Wolves need. Like I said before, they need defense. Now, here's an here's another issue that we have to bring up with this is that Ben Simmons, although he is very good defensively, offensively, he was terrible. This past, I mean, this past playoff series, he was terrible offensively. Um, I'm looking at some of the stats against the Hawks here. He five points uh, on June 20th, sixth, or no, six points uh, before that eight. I mean, he couldn't hit the broadside of a barn, the broadside of a barn. But the Wolves, here's the thing. The Wolves need both shooting and defense too. They need a guy that can score and consistently. Malik Beasley can score. Mm-hmm. But is Malik Beasley going to uh, cooperate and stay out of trouble? That's another thing we got to consider too. So I, I guess I'm just, I'm not sold on Simmons as everyone else's, but I just want to, I, I, if they do make the trade, they got to figure out some of his off. Cause I mean, in the off season, Philadelphia is like putting him through the ringer to be able to or, or score points. I mean, the guy can't shoot a three to save his life. That's for one. Um, but then again, he has, he's had some injury issues, but a lot of, a lot of uh, teams think that he can fix them. Can the Wolves fix them? Well, it's the Wolves. So I, I <laughs> you gotta, you, you just gotta take a chance and see where it goes. I wouldn't be necessarily against it, but I would just say you lose a shooter, you add a defender. Then you got to add another guy as, as a shooter at some point, if they do make that trade. What do you think? What do you got, Cole? Okay. You're shaking uh, your head? What was that? You're shaking your head. Oh. Go ahead. Well, okay, so here's the thing. Like, you, you say that we're losing a shooter, gaining a defender, but um, outside of Okogi and Culver, which we can swap those two guys out for pretty much anything, we've got a solid group of shooters right there. We've got, like I said, the, the four people probably starting around him all can shoot. Yeah. Depending on who we get in the draft, Jalen Suggs can shoot. Cade Cunningham can hit a shot. Guys coming off the bench, Hernan Gomez can hit threes. Jalen Noel can hit threes. Nas Reed is a pretty good three-point shooter. I'm not touching Ricky Rubio. We're not going down <laughs> that road. Don't you dare. But, Don't you dare. I, I'm, I'm in a good mood today. Don't you dare. <laughs> <laughs> but here's the thing. is You've got enough shooters and enough scores on this team. Right now, the only top-notch outside defender that we have is Josh Okoge. And if you want to talk about bad on offense, Josh Okoge is 10 times worse on offense than Ben Simmons is. Three-point shooting is bad, too, with him. Yeah, I agree. At least Ben Simmons knows he can't hit a jump shot. (laughs) Josh Okoge doesn't know that he can't shoot, and he'll still go one for six in a night (laughs) and absolutely kill you every single time so this brings you in a top 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 flight defender for when you go against the kevin durant's when you go against the lebron james when you go against the Giannis's, um when you go against the devin bookers people like that this gives you that top flight defender that we currently do not have i love Jaden mcdaniels Jaden mcdaniels is not that guy he's just not that guy so you need to bring in a top-of-the-line defender that is also a top-of-the-line creator, and when he's not a bit messed up in the head, is a top-of-the-line finisher. He cannot hit a jump shot, but that is one flaw in an otherwise pretty much perfect game. All right. Voldy, what do you think of Cole's proposition? I want it. I want it to happen. (laughs) I just think in this day and age, everybody can shoot the basketball. It takes – a very select group to be able to defend when, especially you're seeing games 
finishing out 115 to 110 or, you know, 135 to 120. I mean, you got to have guys out there to play some defense a little bit. Yeah, ben Simmons, better overall player than for sure D'Lo, and that's, and that's putting it very lightly in just looking at it from a very far, far view. I think Ben Simmons would definitely be, and especially the way things have kind of been the last couple of years, you know, the whole trust the process has kind of run its course out in Philly a little bit, and I think now is the time that the process is starting to get a little little bit of fracture in it as well so this may be the first piece and hopefully it's a good piece as well i i am all for ben simmons uh, in that proposition especially if it's going to be a straight one for one may take a little bit more sweetening of the deal for philly to take a take a view like this i think so you know voldy i i don't necessarily I, with you guys thinking the way that if they, if Ben Simmons would come to Minnesota, would I be against it? No, I wouldn't be against it. The only thing that I think that this could, this could hamper their shooting, shooting ability. Yes. But if they're able to add someone after that whole aspect, then we'll see what happens, but let's think about it for a second. Okay. You add Simmons, you go out and you get, you know, you know, Rosas is going to have to work some of this magic now. Let's just say that that happens. Will this hurt the Wolves? Maybe. Well, but will it more help them? Who knows? I guess we'll have to you know, figure out how that will all transpire. But if it happens, hey, it's fine with me. We'll see. We'll see what we can get. And like you said, you know, I think this is a big year for D'Lo to prove, hey, look, I'm still, I want to be here, you know, and I want to play well, things like that. I want to, you know, stay healthy and whatnot. But then again, like you mentioned, the Swaggy P deal, you know, you never know what you're getting with that. Right, Cole? You never know what you're getting. It's one <laughs> phone call away. One line. Great cash, homie. <laughs> oh, goodness. <laughs> oh, good Lord. But anyway, we'll, 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 we'll see what happens. But Cole, we appreciate you coming on. Um, it, it, it's been too long since we talked Wolves. And, you know, you've, yeah. you've, you've made a good case for best guess of 2021. We might have you on again. We probably will uh, before the year's out. But um, if that Ben Simmons straight happens, I, I know the first person who I'm going to talk to. Okay. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> we'll have to see how hey, it goes. I better get some credit for calling that, too. Uh -huh. well, uh, I'm the one that put it out there, baby. Let's go. We'll I give you out there a year in advance. <laughs> we'll give you credit where credit's due. All right. We'll, we'll, we'll give you a credit or credit is due. So we'll, we'll go from there. But uh, anyway, uh, Cole, thanks for coming on again. And uh, thank you for not uh, going into the Ricky Rubio uh, uh, ordeal with me, because I, I think that that's another conversation that we'll have down the road. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> we'll see what happens with that. <laughs> All right, uh, Shield. A lot to, a lot to be said about that uh, yeah. interview. It was fun. I mean, it, we had a good time. I mean, uh, you know, I think we, we had, we had some, some of the same opinions, and also I think we had some differing opinions, and I think that's what makes it fun. Um, but we appreciate Cole coming on, and um, hopefully, you know, at, at some point I'd like to maybe have, like, a special segment of, like, ripping on rubio or, or something or, like that or something like no no <laughs> or uh you know i mean the jimmy butler thing i think would be fun I, I think i think that would be a good segment to where we could you know go back and forth and obviously i have my opinion i think cole's got a differing differing opinion on that too so hey we'll just kind of right. roll with the punches and see where it goes from here so but um Anyway, uh, we appreciate Cole for coming on and the zoners chiming in as well. It's, it, was a, it was a fun segment uh, to get done. I don't know if it's enough for to win best guest 2021, so he might have to come it's on tall, again. It's a tall order right now, but it's in the running. <laughs> it's in the running. Yes, I. Yeah, Cole says, yes, I definitely do. So, hey, there you go. There you go. So, we'll see what happens. All right, uh, Voldy, now it's already time to get into Absurd or Approved. We got a lot uh, to talk about, especially uh, – you know, the MLB, there's a lot of, you know, me messed up stuff happening. There's been trades that have been going on in the NBA. And um, uh, there's 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 two goats now. There's two goats now, apparently, apparently. in that. And, and uh, then Team USA as well. And then uh, a guy 
the number one prospect in the ML, top prospect in the MLB is up with the Rays. So we got a lot to talk about for ARA. So let's get it going with some absurd or approved. It's time for everyone's favorite segment, absurd or approved. All right, Shield, it is time for Absurd or Approved, so why don't you uh, rattle them off for us, please? Well, we start off with Major League Baseball because they just continue to find more and more ways to get themselves into trouble and create more problems that they don't need. Yesterday was day two of Major League Baseball's revamped enforcement on the sticky stuff of foreign substances for pitchers, on ye old baseball as well and well things have gotten out of hand already to the point where the pitchers that are being cracked down on uh have taken it to another level case in point last night philadelphia versus washington now it was at this point second time in the first and third innings the first two inspections against uh national starter max scherzer were you know nothing out of the ordinary but then two more came, and that was instigated by uh, Phillies manager Joe Girardi. Two, twice in the same inning. And by the fourth time, Max Scherzer was done. Throws his hat, throws his glove onto the ground, almost takes his pants off. More on that coming up as well. To the point where he is just completely out of sorts. You thought the first three times they would have caught something if he was using it, but... The fourth time was definitely not the charm and led to a strong reaction out of the Nationals and also from Max Scherzer's. Uh, fast forward later that night, same situation. Former Twins uh, reliever and closer Sergio Romo, as he was walking his way off the field, pretty much the same thing. Hat, glove, and then almost drops his pants. He gets about halfway down to the point where, you know what, there's a little bit of upper leg showing, but luckily enough, uh, we keep it PG here on Minnesota Sports <laughs> Live. But is it absurd or approved Major League Baseball's uh, revamped moves to crack down and the fact that it's already getting hand not even half a week into said enforcement? Well, I, I think it's absurd. Um, the reason why I think it's absurd is because they, they keep – they, they're trying to crack down on this, but they're cracking down too hard, if that makes any sense. Um, now, I understand that a, a lot of these players do this type of stuff and everything like that, but I think there's a better way of doing it, and I don't have the exact solution right in front of me, but it's getting to a point where – these guys aren't being like allowed to play the way that they want to, you know, and it's, you know, and then it starts off all these fights and this wasn't the only incident too. So let's, mm -hmm. let, let's, let's throw this in there as well. This wasn't the only incident <coughs> because Sergio Romo, like we talked about before the show had a similar incident where he's like, here, let me show you, you know, like I, I got nothing on me and things like that. And I, I think, what Scherzer was saying is that he was trying to – the ball slipped out of his hand um, he, the whole night. He was sick of licking his fingers, uh, tasting uh, Rosen, and uh, I, couldn't even, I couldn't even get sweat from the back of my head because it, was really, it really wasn't a warm night. So you can factor that in as well with the weather. I think that um, Manfred has been doing a terrible job at trying to crack down on this and – to be honest, Voldy, as I'm looking at it right now, I think it's going to get worse. Um, I think it's going to get uh, progressively worse. Now, you know, Girardi said, I've seen Max a long time, 2010. Obviously, he's going to be a Hall of Famer. Um, I see him wipe his head like he was doing tonight. I've ne or I've never seen him wipe his head like he was doing tonight, ever. It was suspicious for me. He did it just four or five times. Um he said, I didn't mean to offend anyone. I just got to do what's right for my club. Now, I understand from a manager's perspective why you would do that, but at the same time, um, you know, I just think it was Scherzer trying to find the best way to, you know, deal with, uh, you know, how he was pitching. And no one's above suspicion. I get that. I understand that. But I think there's a better way of doing it. They have to find it before a lot of these, a lot more of these players start revolting again. So, um, 
again, it's MLB screwing up, so I don't know. Voldy, what do you think? You know, Rob Manfred's whole big thing is trying to speed up the game to make it more enjoyable. Well, all these new rules and enforcement, it's slowing down the game yes. to the point where it's just becoming more outlandish to begin with. Look, I even said it too earlier this week. If pitchers aren't allowed, if there's going to be enforcement on, you know, pitchers not being able to use uh, foreign substances, which they shouldn't in the first place, then, you know, batters shouldn't be able to use video. I mean, it's one edge over another. I mean, the fact that foreign substances is still a thing to talk about. Yeah. Yes, it, it's certainly an issue as well. A guy like Max Scherzer doesn't need foreign substances. Three-time Cy Young winner. He's going into the Hall of Fame just on his numbers alone. He's already a World Series champion. There's just no need for it from him. Now, if we're talking about, uh, you know, Joe Bag of Donuts, who's up for his ninth time with his 20th <laughs> different team, then he's going to need a little something extra yeah, to stay yeah. in the league longer so he can make his major league pension and, uh, you know, be able to get onto the, you know, player benefits for once he retires. But I, I see this as a problem because of the fact that there's no punishment on the other side. There's a punishment for the pitchers. They get caught so with something. But what if a manager, you know, calls out somebody and it turns out that they're clean? Like in, uh, you know, like in the, the NHL, if a coach challenges a goal, and it isn't overturned or some sort of call as well, well, that team actually loses the opportunity at another challenge, but also is a, is a man down. It's a penalty. Where's that going to go? I mean, that's certainly one way to go at the same time, but it's just getting ridiculous. All these additions of rules is just really, I, I hate to say it, ruining the integrity of baseball with the fact that Rob Manfred wants to throw – and be able to, you know, speed up the game. But this stuff's just slowing it down to the point where I'm even lo losing interest. And I love baseball in the first place. It's completely absurd. Oh, yeah, it's, and you know, I think the zoners chiming in. You know, Munson's sticking around. You know, and he he's even saying, I feel as though they took this too far. Unless it's blatant, uh, don't stop the game. Exactly. And if you want to speed up the game, um, this isn't the way to do it. <laughs> I can tell you that much. Exactly. Um, and then, you know, Voldy, I think everybody loves your Joe Bag of Donuts examples. I, I think, you know, whenever you use them, you know, you feel free to use them. We, we love the Joe Bag of Donuts. You know, examples. I can't take credit for Joe Bag of Donuts. More coming up with that later today. Oh, okay. Well, then we got that. Easy A says let the players play. Let the exactly. players play. Let's Just let them play, okay? Just let them play. That's all we ask. So there is that. All right. Uh, next one, Voldy. Well, in a very interesting strategic move, we go to the world of the NBA. Since taking over as uh, uh, president of basketball operations, former Celtics coach uh, Brad Stevens, still with the Boston Celtics, decided to make a move that did include sending all-star point guard Kemba Walker the 16th pick in this year's NBA draft and a 2025 second-round selection to the Oklahoma City Thunder. In return, the Celtics get Al Horford, Moses Brown and a 2023 second round pick that was made back on the the trade made back on Friday. Very interesting trade as well. Uh, Kemba Walker, a uh, situation where maybe he'll be able to uh, spread his wings a little bit more in OKC and Celtics get Al Horford back into the fold once again. Absurd to approve this trade for the Celtics and who ultimately wins this trade overall? Well. <sighs> If you look at it from a financial perspective, uh, there, there's a lot of guaranteed money uh, uh, going on here. So there's, there's, yep. there's a lot to be had with this. With Kemba, uh, he's roughed only, uh, roughly owed seven, uh, $73 million over the next two years. Now, he's not the only one that's getting a lot of money here. Uh, poll ads take notes. Uh, Hor Horford is owed $53 million, $41 million. Uh, guaranteed over the same two years. So Yikes. what what does Boston do? They get rid of those contracts, which is smart because because you need to create a little bit of cap space for yourself, especially to re-sign guys that you want. Evan Fournier was another guy that they had on their team that they got at the trade deadline. So if you're looking at the Celtics, yeah, I, I'd probably I'd probably say the Celtics. Uh, I, I think this trade has my stamp of approval because really Oklahoma City's not getting gypped by any means because they they have a like three first round picks uh i believe uh coming up this season 
And they're not going to hold on to Kemba. They're working with him to find the right fit for for him wherever he, he may go. Now, they did the same thing with Paul, with uh, Danny Green, and, you know, Horford as well because um, he, he was shut down, like, even earlier this NBA season. So it, it, OKC is playing this right, and I, I, I really think that in the future they're going to be looking pretty good. You know, it's tough when you're OKC when you lose, you know, obviously Durant and then, you know, Westbrook and everything like that, and they've just become irrelevant. <laughs> and, yep. You know, they. He, I mean, yeah, you had CP3 for like one year, but then you know, we knew that that was going to, you know, that wasn't going to last. So it's, it's interesting to see how Oklahoma City will, you know, trade. they'll trade Kemba, but – are they going to get another first round out of this? I mean, this is looking pretty good for both teams. But if you're looking from the, the guys that want to win now, I'd probably say that it, it's the Boston Celtics. They're able to re-sign some guys. You know, Jason Tatum's fantastic. Jalen Brown's been great. Fournier has been uh, a beast as well. So I think they want to, you know, re-sign some of the guys and also get some guys in free agency and or via trade. So I think it's looking good for the Celtics. So. Voldy, what do you think? Yeah, I like this trade as well because, yeah, Kemba was kind of odd, the odd man out in this situation because with Tatum and Brown really getting their footing back in order and they get a guy that they've trusted with and the likes of Al Horford who did play with him up until he signed with Philadelphia a couple years ago. And that's the, also the big bonus. Boston's not, you know, on the hook for the money that he's owed to. You know, for, for Kemba to go out to OKC, maybe he'll be the guy there, but – you know, the Thunder do have three first-round picks this year in they the do. draft, so that's definitely going to open a few eyes to see where they go with that route. Boston's definitely been in need of a, of a big man for the last couple of years, ever since Horford left as well. They haven't been able to truly establish a, a big man inside to the full effect. But you know what? I think it's a pretty complimentary piece. Nobody lost in this trade. No. I would definitely say it leans more towards Boston overall, though. Yeah, I think if you're looking at the win now mode, it's probably. But you know, maybe later on, OKC's starting to you know gain some traction. You know, get some veteran guys and then get a couple of young guys. You know, in the draft. So, I think uh, yeah, you really can't. If you were to pick a winner, I think we'd all agree it'd be Boston at this point. So there's that. Mm-hmm. But anyway, uh, next one, Voldy. Well, this one kind of a little bit outdated, but also at the same time, uh, the the story speaks for itself. Tampa Bay Rays yesterday called up top Major League Baseball prospect Wander Franco as he joined the team out of the minor leagues uh, yesterday. And well, he made quite the splash as well. The 20-year-old switch hitting infielder who was the number one ranked prospect in all of the uh, Major League Baseball players in the minor leagues and all, all the prospects and lo and behold he wastes little time he hits a big three run home run in a loss against the boston red sox though but at the time did end up tying the game as well when you look at the numbers from this guy too they kind of speak for themselves but absurd or approved tampa bay making the big splash to call up their top prospect and also the top prospect in baseball oh a stamp of approval i i look at this and i think this is the right way to go about it if the guy now you, the, the, for the stats for him, you know, when he was in AAA, and obviously, yeah, I get it, it's AAA, whatever, who cares. He had 315, uh, seven home runs, 35 RBIs. That's pretty damn good. And in 39 games, I mean, why the heck not? It seems like he's ready to go, and um, he's he's a player that I think can make a difference for the Rays. And obviously the Rays – you know, not too long ago, they're in the World Series. And, you know, might as well bring up someone that can make a difference. And he really has. I mean, he really has. Um, and the Rays need it right now because uh, they're ranking 25th in OPS right now. So it's they, they needed a little bit of a uh, push to get them uh, uh, to move them or get them going offensively. And that's what, it, and that's what they did. They said – Screw it, let's bring him up and let's see how this goes. And it's worked out pretty well. So I, I, I don't see an issue with it, um, especially there are some teams that uh, 
take their time, but uh, we, we won't get into that, and we all know who I'm talking about when I'm saying that. But um, I, I think the Rays are doing the right thing and bringing this guy up, and um, there's I – mean, the, people are raving about this guy. He's only 20 years old, too. So, Franco, watch out. We'll see what happens. Voldy, what do you think? Yeah, I think this was a smart move. The writing was kind of on the wall as soon as the Rays made the trade for uh, – traded away Willie Adamas earlier this year, and then they've had – uh, Taylor Walls is also a rookie, and then uh, Joey Wendell's got some starts over it at short as well. Not a whole lot of uh, consistency as well, but you know what? Uh, for Franco, he's very versatile. He's played some short. He can play a little bit of third base as well, uh, you know, in, in a position as well. A guy who's 20 years old, he's got plenty of time to uh, – get used to the major league lifestyle. The numbers kind of speak for itself. And you know what? It came up pretty big last night. Ultimately didn't uh, factor into a win, but Mm -hmm. the young uh, infielders got himself a good start in the major leagues. I think this was a smart move for Tampa Bay to call up the young prospect. Don't see why the heck not. And obviously they needed the spark and there they have it with a top prospect. So, uh, best of luck to him, and you know, obviously, it might. It's probably going to be making for a great career there in Tampa if they can keep him, as uh, we would put as well. So, um, anyway, uh, we're we're, we're kind of getting into Tampa Bay as well. So, uh, next one, Voldy. <laughs> well, it ought to be called Champa Bay, especially after the last <laughs> season for all four major sports. Uh, well, it was announced late last week that the likes of Madden is going to be going not with just one cover athlete but for two this two. coming year as well. The 2021 season does kick off as well later this year, but the cover of Madden 22 will feature in the MVP edition, Tom Brady, Patrick Mahomes, the two that faced off in Super Bowl 55 with, of course, the, the GOAT, Tom Brady, coming out as the champion as well. Now, we all know the story. Being on the cover of Madden does come with its own accolades, but also comes with its own share of hurdles. We all know the story of the Madden curse. Now, we want to talk about here on the show which team is going is most likely Ooh. and which player is most likely to be affected by the Madden curse. Wow, you really, you're really putting everybody on the spot, the zoners, myself. Oh, man. Um, but I'm not going to lie, and I got my iPad right here. I mean, this looks kind of badass. I'm not going to lie. This does. cover here, let it's me bring great. it up for the zoners, if you can see it all right. I'll bring it up a little bit. There we go. There you go. It's badass. I mean, it's just kind of two guys. You know, a guy that's already, you know, proven himself, obviously. And, you know, he's got seven He's got seven rings. So there's, there's, there's all that. And um, Mahomes is obviously, you know, he's – <laughs> he's proven that uh, he's that damn good too. So, whew. well, there's there's been a lot of bad Madden curses, and um, you know, it, there has there there have been players that have broken that curse, and you know, Mahomes I would say is one of those guys. Uh, Brady definitely as well. Um, but if it if it comes down to it. You know, I the one thing that I would probably bring up, and you got to look back at the Super Bowl. And, again, you know, I wouldn't say a lot of this was Mahomes' fault because look at the offensive line that they had. You know, he's running around like a chicken with his head cut off. And, you know, Tom Brady has it all set up for him, a good, great offensive line, great wide receivers, got a great backfield, playoff Lenny. Uh, was fantastic as well, but if if it came down to it, I'd probably say it could maybe hit Mahomes. I mean, you know, is for the MVP ed- edition, is it going to be too much? You know, is it going to be too much pressure? And then coming off that Super Bowl loss, things like that. I mean, but then again, I mean, you could teeter the other way. Well, people got to think. Well, Brady's got to fall off at some point here, but he hasn't. He right. hasn't fell off the cliff. Max Kellerman, um, but it's it, – I'd probably say Mahomes just because of what happened in the past season. Um, and, you know, if Kansas City does the right thing and solidifying that offensive line. So, yeah, I'd, I'd probably say uh, I'd probably say Mahomes at this point. So, Voldy, what do you think? 
It's it's got to be Mahomes. You look at the overall makeup of these two teams going into the season. Kansas City has lost more. I mean, they've lost a good portion of their defense. They got guys out with, uh, you know, injuries, also off the field issues too. Meanwhile, Tampa Bay is completely untouched. All 11 starters are going to be back from last year's Super Bowl winning team. They've added a few pieces as well in the offseason. Guys are coming back. Guys are going to be healthy. Uh, Mahomes is coming off foot surgery. Brady had knee surgery. But in true position overall, I mean, Mahomes is most likely the one just with uh, I, I just go off the fact of the overall team looking like might be a down year for Kansas City. So I, I say that Mahomes is most likely to be affected by the Madden curse. And, you know, if you disagree, I, I, I mean, you, you can. You definitely can. And, you know, a lot of teams I feel like, you know, it's hard to win another one after <laughs> after you win uh, the year after. And, you know, obviously Tampa Bay's built to win, and they haven't right. lost many guys, <laughs> if any, uh, for that matter, because I, I feel like they've been resigning everyone. And then Clown Tony is still there. So, yep. But uh, I, I hope for, for a video game's sake, because I am a Madden I'm a frequent Madden player as well, I, I really hope that they've made some changes because uh, I heard last year wasn't the best uh, for game playing wise, but I'm I'm keeping my fingers crossed this year is a little bit better. Mm-hmm. So for the gamers out there, I you know I I got you, I got you. So all right, uh, last one, Voldy. <laughs> Well, we go here just a few weeks away from the start of the 2020, well, technically the 2020 Summer Olympics, even though it'll be in 2021, but don't even get me started on that. Team USA's Olympic men's basketball roster is getting closer to be filled, although a couple of declines in the last couple of days that we've known. But looking here at some of the early uh, commitments to the Team USA roster, of course, Miami Heat center Bam Ab- Adebayo, along with James Harden. Got Kevin Durant, Draymond Green, Bradley Beal, Jason Tatum, Devin Booker, and Damian Lillard as well are saying that they will be committing to play for Team USA this summer in the Olympics as well. Notable exceptions that most likely won't be joining Team USA. Steph Curry, Donovan Mitchell, also seen recently too. Uh, looks like a Chris Paul will definitely be out as well. Yep. And maybe also uh, could see maybe Paul George, Kawhi Leonard in the mix as well. Looking at the early indications of players that are going to be going for Team USA in the Olympics, absurd or approved Team USA brings home gold for the Olympics once again. Oh, they have to. They have to. And the reason why I say they have to is because you ha- there's there's too much talent on this team. Um, you know, obviously LeBron's not on the team because, you know, again, coming off injuries, things like that. I mean, y- you understand that. But looking at this team, the eight commitments so far, out of bio, who, who's been very good for the Heat, uh, James Harden. I mean, Harden's going to be an offensive machine. And then KD. You know, KD is just a beast in himself. And then Draymond. I think Draymond will be a nice addition, too. I think, uh, I think you know, he'll provide some grit. And, you know, he usually does. Hopefully not kicking at people in the balls, but there's that. Uh, Bradley Beal. Bradley Beal's been fantastic. Fantastic score. Jason Tatum had a fantastic year. Oh, and, uh, uh, you know, that Devin Booker guy, uh, he's been doing pretty well for the Sun. So, yeah, Damian Lillard, same thing. It's not a big deal that Chris Paul, uh, uh, Chef Curry with the shot, and uh, Donovan Mich- uh, Mitchell are, are, won't be there. But it's this team is it should win the gold, and I think they will win the gold because uh, there, there's too much star power. You look at, you know, Respectfully, Team USA has been dominant, and I think they'll be dominant again. Now, it was it was it two thousand four, two thousand eight, or whenever when they got bronze. Yeah, when they got bronze or something stupid like that. You cannot let yep. that happen. I think the next year or the yeah. next time they're in the Olympics, Kobe and LeBron and every they said. This ain't happening again. We're getting gold. Still, I'm still waiting for. It's been over a year now. They said that there was going to be a documentary about the 08 yes. Redeem team. Where is that documentary? That's a good point. I'm and waiting. there's footage. We've seen Come the footage, on. too. Dwight Howard, Darren Williams, 
I mean, all that stuff. We're waiting on it. I I, I agree, Voldy, 100%. But, yeah, uh, I think stamp of approval, they'll win the gold. Um, and if they anything less than that, disappointment. So, uh, Voldy, what do you think? Yeah, the only thing standing in the way for Team USA to bring home gold is themselves again, like they lost in 04. To Puerto Rico. Are you is kidding that me? Knockout, in the knockout round in, in, in Greece. I mean, that was just completely embarrassing and then oh wait you go through a team redeem team 2012 gold medal 2016 gold medal and now this time around four you know it's unfortunate that we won't probably ever get to see steph curry for team usa i don't know if he's been on team usa at all in his time i don't think so in the nba which has been uh, you know unfortunate as well but i mean you get early indication you get kevin durant you got jason tatum hopefully devin booker is able to play even though he's going to be uh, looking at possibly a final spot. James Harden, too. I mean, there's going to be a little grit. There's going to be a little flash with this team, too. I mean, Draymond Green's going to be out there trying to, you know, wreck wreck people in the foreign countries in different languages as well. I mean, that's <laughs> going to be interesting to see. But, you know, they got some pretty solid players, a few guys that will get in there on the mix as well, maybe a couple of role guys. But I think that's completely stamp of approval that Team USA is going to bring home gold for the men this year. I, I, I think – not only for the men, but the women as well. I think they'll win the gold. Dude, too. they are super stacked on the yeah. women as always. They're, they're, they're stacked. And not only that, I mean, we're stacked too. So it's looking pretty good. I, I, I'm looking forward to watching Lillard play. I, I've been a big fan of Damian. And, uh, yeah, Dame time, and, baby. Uh, and Book. And obviously, you know, I'm surprised during our little uh, uh, interview that we, we didn't bring up, like, you know, there were some rumblings that the Wolves might want to try to get Booker, but – don't right. think that's going to happen after what's been going on in the playoffs nope. here recently. So, uh, unfortunately. But, yeah, the, the, this team's way too good to lose. I mean, and KD will make I, – I think KD and Harden and those guys and Draymond will make sure, hey, we're winning freaking gold, guys. No, Nothing less. Nothing less, okay? So, we have that to look forward to come uh the olympics so there's that but anyway that'll wrap up ara this week voldy it's been a while for some shield shout outs it's been a while been a couple weeks it's been a couple weeks you've got a lot to get through tonight so yeah. uh let's uh let's get it going with some uh, uh, shield, uh shout outs shield shout outs All right, Shield, who are you shouting out tonight? Well, a couple of these still yet to be determined in a few awards that have been handed out here in the last couple of weeks in the NHL. Definitely got to give some big Shield shout-outs to some wild players and coaches that have been nominated. Wild rookie for Kirill Kaprizov, a.k.a. Kirill for being nominated for the Calder Trophy for the top NHL rookie. That award still yet to be determined as of late. A uh, big shield shout out as well to Wild Defenseman and Captain Jared Spurgeon for being nominated for the Lady Bing Memorial Trophy. Didn't win, got robbed as always. Minnesota Wild head coach Dean Evason for being nominated as one of the three finalists for the Jack Adams Coach of the Year. Uh, lost to uh, former uh, player and uh, former Carolina Hurricane player Rob Brendamore. Got robbed, who's also the coach of the Hurricanes as well. Uh, shout out as well to Team USA Hockey for capturing bronze in the International Ice Hockey Federation World Championships with players including Brian Boyle, former UND forward Christian Willannon, former Wild player Ryan Donato, mm -hmm. Tage Thompson, even Justin Abdelkader, and Matt Roy as well have helping Team USA capture a medal for the, uh, for the Americans in the uh, World Championships. Uh, some big news that came out late last week, I should say early last week, but the Minnesota Lynx did announce that they will be retiring a couple of uniform numbers next season. Yeah. It was announced that former players Simone Augustus and Rebecca Brunson will have their numbers retired from the Lynx, and they will hang proudly in the Target Center as well. So a big shield shout-out not only the Lynx, but for Simone and also for Rebecca Brunson for their contributions to the Lynx and also uh, for the dubious, uh, for the honor as well, for them being to get their numbers retired. 
Uh, the reason why I was out, la uh, out last week for the show, well, the Aiken Gobbler baseball team was playing in the state tournament down in St. Cloud. And lo and behold, the Aiken Gobblers finished in third place at the Class 2A state baseball tournament, which did afford me a few opportunities to catch up with some old friends and familiar faces, friends of the program as well. And that does include for the Hayfield Vikings baseball team, finished off their Class A state tournament run, That's not cool. only with a championship title, but a 26-0 record. Of course, Ooh. a couple former teammates of mine with the Hayfield Heat, Casey Kreckling, head coach, assistant coach, Cam Rutledge as well, uh, part of that uh, Hayfield Vikings uh, baseball team that won the state title uh, for that uh, program as well, which also brings up another opportunity as well. On my way, got to say hi to both those uh both those uh, former teammates of mine at the game ran into a former SMSU Mustang, Evan Bungham, down hey! at the game as well. And I got to say hi to him. I and, do. Uh, well, the whole, the, so the, the championship game took place on Friday. It was that Friday at like 10 o'clock or whatever. Just so happens that Evan's sister, Joe, who's a good friend of mine, she got married on Saturday. Wow. So Evan and Joe's little brother... Uh, is one of the groomsmen in the wedding so they played set they played friday morning that saturday joe and her fiance good friend of mine as well uh cole kruger got married saturday afternoon so lo and behold it all worked out really wow. nice as well congratulations to the krugers as well and uh joe and cole as well and they're on their honeymoon right now so congrats to those two lovebirds as well for finally uh getting hitch in the process <laughs> while also down at st cloud Nice little surprise that uh, came my way. Ran into SMSU baseball coach Paul Blanchard hey! at uh, the complex down there and learned that from in my four years with the uh, Mustang baseball yep. team that there have been a lot of instances, a lot of stories that Coach Blanchard likes to run through. There's usually a I'm list sure. about seven, eight, maybe nine stories that he always tells. Lo and behold, the shield is in that rotation of stories. Now, he always sets it up because he's uh, always, you know, ma lightly, lightly making fun of the left-handed people, the left-handed pitchers especially. Ah, yeah. So there, I didn't even remember this story, so he tells me the whole story. At one point, you know, he's talking about how my role as manager on the team, get the uniforms all put together, set out to, from everybody's lockers or whatever. And, you know, coming back from a road trip, everybody turns in their stuff, yada, 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 get it washed next day and what have you. So going through the uniforms at one point and, uh, uh, you know, uh, go through everything and report back to Skip on my way out. And he says, he said, well, Shield, how do we make out? He said, and then apparently my response was, well, we got everything back, but, and then he says, but what? Well, Three of the uniforms were turned inside out, so I had to spend my time turning them inside out. And he <laughs> said, let me guess, player one, two, and three. And I said, yep, all of them left-handed. There you go. <laughs> Bro, so, I've been here the whole time. My, my impact with the, uh, with the Mustang baseball team has now been fully integrated into Coach Blanchard's repertoire. Always good to run into Skip down of at uh, you know whatever ball field that he's at and just so happened to be a, a good time as well. A couple more shield shout-outs here. Got to give a big uh, shield shout-out to Coach Craig Larson, most notably with the Northern Lakes Lightning hockey team uh, that did make it to the state uh, tournament this year in Class A. He actually, late last week, informed me that he was able to pick up one of those, uh, you know, at the state tournament, they sell those rink rat yep, shirts yep. Whatever, with all the, oh, all the yeah. rats with the team players on it, with the team yeah. uniforms on it. Yep. I got one of those shirts. I, hey. I didn't see the wash right now or something. So Class A was a pretty good year for the Shield, not only because it has Northern Lakes Lightning, which I covered, covered their second yep. championship game, first time program history. My my hometown program, the Dodge County Wildcats, made it to the section, made it to the tournament, and also, you know, ultimately fell to a, there was Gentry Academy or something like that in the state title game, and then also get to represent Creative Consultant Mrs. Sarah Antu's Vold's hometown program in the Litchfield Dasso Cocado <laughs> team as well. So we're covered. That's just the stars all aligning yeah. in one. So a big thank you to Craig as well for hooking up uh, with the Rink Rat shirt. Definitely will be well cherished for many years. 
couple more uh, Shield shout-outs here before we wrap things up here. Unfortunately, earlier this week, we did lose uh, a prominent player in the world of hockey and also for the state of Minnesota as uh, Wild Assistant General Manager Tom Curvers did pass away after his battle with lung cancer on Monday. Of course, uh, most notably from his playing career, won the Hobie Baker Award as a top college player in 1984 when he was a member of the University of Minnesota Duluth and also served as Assistant General Manager for the last, uh, uh, since 2018, he has served the uh, the state of hockey, of course, playing in multiple years in the NHL for multiple teams as well, giving back to the state of hockey as well. Certainly will be missing many uh, eyes of those within the Wild organization. And also a fun little fact, too, uh, sure. for, our final, uh, for our final Shield shout-out here. Best of luck in retirement and the future for your former uh, UMD Bulldog national champion, former wild player, JT Brown, who did announce his uh, retirement from playing in the NHL, uh, played for the Anaheim Ducks, also for the wild before uh, playing for the Stanley Cup champion, uh, Tampa Bay Lightning to finish off his career, will now be serving as the color uh, commentator and analyst for the Seattle Kraken, going to be joining John Forsland on the TV side of things for the upcoming 2021 22 season so jt brown not going to be too far away from the world of hockey as well and maybe we'll have to see him a little bit closer once the wild do get to play the likes of uh, the seattle kraken next season as well so after a two-week layoff that's going to do it for shield chat up oh so worth it though absolutely worth it uh <sighs> it's been too long i know it's i'm sure it's uh it's been it's been tough uh without it that's for sure um, but hey, we made it through and we're back. We got shield shout outs and we got through, uh, what, what you missed last time. So, hey, we're good mm-hmm. to go. But, uh, you know, I, I feel like a lot of, uh, coach Blanchard's, uh, stories end up with him kicking a, uh, a, a basketball into a hoop. Um, yep. The good old drop kick never drop fails. Kick. It never fails. He just, I don't know how he does it. I, I mean, it's, oh, I mean, I know how he does it, but at the same time, I mean, it's just, it's it's crazy. He he just knows he knows little what feet. he's doing. He's got the little feet that helps. <laughs> <laughs> uh, did he did he call you Delano though when 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 he saw you? Nope. He, he called. He just called me the shield. Yeah, and, yeah, you know yeah, yeah. he he kind of outed me a little bit to the Aiken baseball coaching staff and kind of kind of <laughs> let them know. And I was like, do they know you as the shield? And it's like, <laughs> and then one of the coaches was actually one of the trainers said, I don't even know who he is. I don't even know his first name in the first place. <laughs> oh, it's just funny. Oh my yeah, gosh! A good time. You know, he just he, it's a he likes to he likes to uh, mess around, and you know we love it. We That's... love uh, Skip, and not only Skip, but uh, you know the guys, uh, the assistant coaches that he had too. You know, Bartle, yeah. Payne, uh, Coach Bo, always a good time with those guys. So, but anyway, uh, great job with Shield shoutouts this week, Shield. And we're not done yet because nope. uh, we got stuff we got to show you. We got stickers. There are stickers. stickers. Remember, $2 for the small small uh, bumper stickers, the small stickers. $3 for the big ones, uh, the bumper, big bumper stickers, all that. We got plenty of them. You want some, we can get them to you. They're very cheap, very, 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 very cheap. So we can... Uh, we can set you up if you want some. So we got that going for us. And also, if you want a shirt, we can get you a shirt as well. $20, yep. $5 shipping. Talk to me. Talk to Voldy. Talk to Jimbo. Talk to the Curve Doctor. We'll get you set up. But anyway, as well, thank you to National Fleet Graphics, um, Crown Rental, uh, for uh, the stickers as well. And uh, W2 Performance. Uh, Voldy, I, I did talk to Mr. Rotel. We need to get him on soon. Uh, yes, we do. Because he's, he said, we'll, we'll get a recording set up. We'll, we'll, we need to see his face. We need to see We him. do. And, I and, need to yeah. see. You see the red, the, the, the whole red pepper thing. Maybe that'll get addressed at some point, but we'll get it. We'll, we'll get it. Uh, we'll get it done. But um, that's the, I mean, that's the big thing. You know, the barbell nerds. They have stickers, too, only two bucks. I mean, check out the Barbell Nerds. They're doing a fantastic job as well. So, um, hey, 
Jimbo says, let's clear out the shirts at $20 until they are Boom. gone. There you go. We, we, you guys they're, watch they're downsizing down in Byron right now. I don't, I'm not surprised they only got like a lamp and a chair left at that place. They are just, <laughs> first off, let, let's clear up one thing. Sure. They're moving. They're, yeah. they're, they're getting out of Dodge there down there. So they've got stuff they need to get rid of down there. Let's get those shirts out people let's get them out yeah let's see let's Full see what we have at, at inventory we'll check with jimbo see where we're at yep. with it and uh yeah we'll let we'll let people know so we got shirts we can get them to you and go from there so but anyway uh two other things before we uh head off for the night uh jack will keep check out jack's junkyard now with apparel make sure you check out his stuff he's doing a fantastic job we appreciate everything and we have sweatshirts of his so he's got a sweatshirt in minnesota we got it all set up. So uh, shout out to Jack's Junkyard, Jack O'Keefe, uh, with what he's got going on. And also check out Breaking Into the League podcast with Sam Gabrielli, Ryan Martin, available on the Spotify's and the Apples of the podcast and things like that. So make sure you guys check that out. We got a lot of there's a lot of hockey going on, so they'll they'll keep you they'll keep you in tune, as we like to say here on Minnesota Sports Live. But anyway, Voldy, it was good to finally uh, be with you again for another show. Uh, I feel like it's been too long. You know, this is episode. Too long. It, it's episode sixty nine. Yes, cue the jokes if you want to. This is a PG show. Just remember, we yes. sprinkle a little thirteen in there, but. Uh, you know, we, 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 we like to make it interesting here for the zoners as well. So we like to have fun here. But anyway, uh, as always, folks, keep in the zone. Hello. Thank you for watching Minnesota Sports Live. Join us Wednesdays at 7 p.m. for live show broadcast. And as Voldy likes to say, follow us on all the socials medias.